We've harvested the hottest spices in all the Dominaria. We've delved deep into the forgotten caves of Keldor to bring you the hottest sauce of any plane. Introducing Flame Tongue Hot Sauce. Our thermal alchemists have flame slashed and fire blasted only the most searing ingredients to bring a flame to your tongue that causes serious damage. Get tongued. Get Flame Tongue Hot Sauce. Deal four damage to any meal. Available at all fine Singer Superstores. Hello, hello, and we're going very old school today. Thanks for joining me. Nice, bright, and early Shirazaman, as always. Appreciate it, my friend. Uh, again, courtesy of Chris at Carousel Games. Today we're doing another league. I probably won't do one next week. I know I keep saying that, but um, I just get the itch, you know? So we've got 17 lands in this. We're going really old school. Um, I was messing around with Goblin Grenade builds, and I didn't like having four of them because you have to uh, affect your opening board state. And I kind of like to top deck them and not wait on them and you know waste two resources for once popper tim and chimsky all right so um yeah today's show is kind of the theme is kind of very old school uh with your old host so we got 17 lands two death sparks i got another one in the sideboard i just love this card um a lot of play errors with this um instead of focusing on anything win loss related i like to make my focus like last week where it was like always make sure to go second with that last list we played last week and then this week I want to see if I can get through the whole league without messing up a uh, death spark or burying it. And what I mean by that is when you put a like a lightning bolt on the on top of it and then it kills death spark because this can get a lot of value. Really, really uh, hesitant to not have an 18th land in this, but we'll see how we feel after the uh, tournament runs. Anyway, over the list, two death sparks, four of these, one lone arsonist, four bushwhackers, four cohorts, two goblin grenades, four sledders, one imitator initiate, initiate or eh. Not, don't ask me about that. Four uh, lightning bolts, four conscripts, four raiders, two heel cutters. Love this card. Three sparksmiths. Always tempted to run four, but you got to cut some stuff. And four war marshals, which are really hand-in-hand, uh, hand, go really well with this. In our sideboard, we got one more death spark, two electric rees, one gorilla shaman, four pyroblasts, and four uh, life staffs. Um, burn can be uh, an issue, especially like um, black burn. Um, in theory, I haven't really faced off against it. I've just been playing this here and there. I used to play this list a lot. And uh, two flaring pains and one goblin cave. So um, second guy on Death Park is bald. Yeah, he's the source of power. That's right. I know we've got this theme going, right? I've, is Did I spot another? Oh, I, maybe she's bald too. You never know, but that's not always the, the best card. So anyway, we're just going to jump on in here and hopefully we can... Uh, get some wins here so one of the cool things i've been wanting to talk about i don't know if it's a cool thing or not but um imagine if fairies just wasn't played anymore and that's kind of how goblins went there was a little rdw phase meaning red deck wins and it got a little bit more stronger um and that's before um uh, uh the volcanic uh electricery came out what is that called um I'm losing my train of thought here. But um, it used to argue, you know, you go you go against the electric, electric revive and you got offense for it. But in its defense, I find that, um, let's close this down here, and we'll go yes on going first. We've got three lands, which is quite a bit, but we like this hand. We'll keep it. So I just don't think Goblins is dead. Um, I know we lost to it a few weeks back, and it comes out of the blue, and it's just one of those lists that's just so, well, now it's probably like tier 1.5 or maybe even 2-ish. But... Um, Always love this this list, um, this these card sets. It's just, uh, but again, you know, just imagine if if all of a sudden, you know, you you take a four or five month vacation, you come back and nobody's playing fairies. That's kind of what it feels like to an old schooler like me. Hmm. And thank you again. Go visit our our host for the show, Carousel Games, courtesy of uh, Chris out there. Uh oh, hex proof. We got no game against. Uh, oh, it's he's going red. All right. Well, maybe it's more of the uh, Jun persuasion, and he'll be blowing up our lands which we won't really mind too much about. And uh, a lot of lists you'll see out there, they run like, uh, so there's the Sledder and the Raider. you got to click very carefully around these cards. Um, but they'll run just a combination of maybe four or five or six of them. I like all eight because if you have 20 creatures and your opponent has 19, you just win because you just attack and swing. So 
And it's always nice to just be able to have always have answers for stuff, whether it's a journey to nowhere and you want to nix their own guy. Maybe you're going against Hexproof and they pull that play. You can wipe your whole board. Sometimes that's a bad play. But speaking of um, good plays, my son and I were playing a tabletop the other day and he double snuffed out his auger and his delver in response to my obsidian alkalite. Um, and I had, uh, oh, oh yeah, I had just played journey and then uh, I only had my alkalite out and that was, it's kind of like a hose against his, his deck when uh, I've got like a 90% win average when that thing sticks and he got me. It was pretty cool. He was like at four life crawled all the way back. We've been playing some popper commander. I'm playing the, uh, uh let's see. Do I want to keep that alive? No, it's not worth that. Yep. And there's nothing else going on. We'll just let it go. Yep. Come on, Death Bark. Let's go. All right. We'll rock like this. And I'm just going to come on in. Boop. We'll right click here. Good old Bushwhacker. And attack. Yeah, that's frustrating. I think I'm just going to let that go, though. We're doing seven. I don't want this to power out a bunch of big fatties, so I'm just I'm going to let this go, actually. The most important card in the scenario is our Sledder. just allows you to just get through that last bit of damage. Of course, we only have to do five now. That could be a problem. A lot of times I play either Fire Blast in this spot or uh, just Chain Lightning. Oh, God, I thought that was a uh, Radiant Fountain. Better write down what we're playing against. Uh, I'll just call it Jund. Thanks for joining me here, everybody. Hopefully we draw a creature. We do. We will go like this. We will attack like this. hi -ya! Probably going to be blocking the citizen no okay so we uh we'll go here we'll say this critter we'll sacrifice this critter it's four or five and then we'll go this to this clicking very slowly sacrificing this say yes as we hit for five and well one of the other things i don't like about goblin grenade <clears throat> sorcery kind of blows that way so so you might think this is going to be a fast show, but anybody that's played Goblins, uh, you're going to find that it can get awfully grindy. Oh, I like the two Death Sparks. If they show up, um, I don't know. I think we're going to want to bring in one Caves. I do have Sledders and a lot of tricks to get around um, Cannonade. That's what I was trying to say about five minutes ago. Um, but let me see. You know what? I'll cut one Death Spark. One will be enough. If we draw it early, that's fine. Don't want to see doubles. And this will let us get a little more reckless when we want to build wide because all our stuff will just be big and fat. Got to be careful with this. I might want to bring in a uh, life staff if the game goes long so I can keep feeding this. I know we're not trying to plan for the game going long, so... Um, yeah, I'm going to lose one grenade and bring in a staff. Let's try this out. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I used to, man, I used to roll with goblins so hard. I think it was this uh, Christmas 2008. I had a crazy lucrative weekend with uh, the old player signals list. Had like four or five, just five O's in like three days with it. It was colossal fun. We'll keep this. We're on the draw. We've got the big fat fatty. We can kill a, uh, a uh, early elf. That's what I'm trying to say. We've got an enchant land. All right. Problem is, if they're on the land destruction plan, it might actually hurt us this game. But I don't know if you'd really want to keep that in against us here. Uh, got to assume that we're going to just draw the most probable. All right, what do we have here? Oh, okay. And is this followed up by that? All right, they look like they're hurting for land. Nope, never mind. There goes that idea. Come on, land. Four, six mana next turn. I think we actually want to kill that. I'll bring this dude out. I don't want that kind of acceleration hitting us that hard. 
Get our sledder out and do a little bit of a slow roll here. Uh oh, that's a problem. Ayakura, yeah, I went really old school today. A couple months back and then a couple weeks back, I've had some random emails of people going, why don't people play goblins anymore? I'm like, I'll play it. Damn good card. All righty. Oh, this is a really good sign here. We'll play this. Uh, unfortunately, we'll just have to do this to it. I'm really considering, um, we don't have the mana for this, obviously. Nope. It's thrashing into this. No. I mean, we have another slitter, but... So this is where you got to be a little patient, which isn't a goblin's thing, right? Cannonade, just... We only get to save one creature. But you still get to. It's a lot better when you get that war marshal out there. One more land would be pretty cool. I love Foundry Street Denizen, says Diamos. It was my very first deck back when I was standard legal. Very nice. MTM Tat now. The show is complete. All righty. Hopefully Hex and Ruse joins us too. Yeah, boy, I I uh, got a, not a funny, a sad story for y'all. My oldest went off for, um, I think it's called CMS training for like advanced cadets or whatever. And he's in Kentucky at Fort Knox right now. He had a 36-hour layover. I didn't even know that was possible. Unbelievable. So I really like this sequence. I'm going to say you can't block. We will say yes to that. One of the best deals in Magic. Yep. It's like our uh, our miniature, uh, what's that called? Uh, <laughs> heel cutter. We will attack. Hiya! Alrighty. Uh, I'll put this on here. Sacrificing this because we don't want to pay for that. This is when you get a war marshal and you can sacrifice it and you still have Foundry Street out, that thing can get to like a 6 1 pretty fast. It's pretty awesome. Layovers when your uh, plane for some reason can't take off or it's been canceled and you just are stuck in the airport and so um i don't know if it's a pretty sure it's a worldwide thing but um i'm pretty ignorant when it comes to world traveling i haven't been on too many sojourns myself but um i know typical ones are like just a few hours maybe in, you know, hear on the news like on the holidays you can get like you know these scenarios where people have to stay overnight but i mean that was like a day and a half so crazy i just Felt so bad for the dude. I was like, oh my goodness. All right, let's see what we're going to have here. Boarding party shows up. Uh, sure, we'll do this. I guess we always have to target with that guy, huh? Any red spell. I did not read that. That's pretty cool. That'd be cool if they have a, uh, you're going against heroic, right? And they they cast a white spell and you you make your own guy not able to block their uh, the deaf duelist or deaf blade deluxe, whatever that thing's called. We'll say no. Keep your guys safe. That'd be a nice little trick. Come on, boarding party. To get some, uh, all right. A lot of big critters coming down. We're getting pretty scared. We've only got them at 15. This game feels out of hand already, like not in our favor. Well, we got them on the defensive. They sure don't want to do much. That's cool. I like drawing cards here. This feels pretty good. I I think I'm going to have to sacrifice some dudes here. Three cards. I don't want Mr. Owlbear to be blocking. Deathblade Deluxe. <laughs> All right. This guy's a problem, so we'll say no to that. Yes. I wish you could just roll out, like, if you've got ten mana, you just make ten things unblockable. That'd be nuts. All right. This is this turns about sacrifice, kids. I'm going to try to trade some of these big fat 3-3s three for some of our little dudes here. We won't be going in with our quality guys. We'll just leave that grunt work to the uh, to the masses. Alrighty. We rock like this. We'll sack this. Get rid of one blocker here. Uh, 
Um, so those can trade. I'll do this to this. I also don't want to go too far all in with the plan of um, um, this guy sacrificing this with a cannonade play here. They could always always top deck it, so I'm, I'm kind of happy to trade here. Uh, pretty sure if I'd rather have the uh, conscript out than another one damage token, so we're going to do like a whole lot of nothing here. Of course, put our feet to the fire if he's got an answer for that, but we'll choose this one and we'll sacrifice this one. We'll rock like this. Try to cut down the numbers, buy us a little bit more time. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -ba -bum. Cannon aid now. Save one dude. Yeah, we'll keep this locked and loaded for next turn so we can at least get past that bear. If they keep throwing out fatties, we're just toast, which is what this deck does really well. Uh oh. Cue the huge stuff. Probably a big old dino coming down. Nope. It's one of these guys. All right. Cool. Sure. We'll say you can't block. Say no. Pretending that we have something fun to eat. All right. I think uh, taking out that one grenade was maybe a bad play here. I'd much rather be able to sacrifice one goblin and kill some big old wall like an owl bear there. All right. Well, I got a little lucky on that scenario. And uh, magnifying glass, interesting. Wow, that's some respect there. Hmm. Right in time. Throw this here. And uh, we'll rock like this. We'll say, uh, you, sir, may not block. That initiative's doing some work. We will attack. Letting them go. This is when it gets really grindy. I'm already four minutes down. Got to be real careful here. This can, I know it sounds funny at this stage, but glad we won that first game real fast. Problem with this kind of a deck, though, you know, weather the storm just can get out of control. You got to get in and out early. And here comes the board state. Yes, it's not looking good. I really hate the artwork for Goblin Slayer. In scenarios like this, you really want to draw, I mean, you want your opponent to be Delver. Variants, you know, with fairies because of all the death sparks and such. You can just have so much fun. But make no mistake, they can still get you. Boy, they are just very respectful. All righty. Hmm. Uh, let me do this. I'll say no to you again, sir. Yes. That poor owlbear is just sitting there by himself, playing with some acorn on the ground or something like it. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, I can just attack with one of the sledders. I just was complaining about the artwork, so let's do it. Might have a... Oh, they're hellbent, so we don't have to really worry about too much here. We're not going to pay for that upkeep anyway. And I'd rather keep this dude alive than have a token laying around just in case he's able to deal with a sledder or three. Who knows? Let's keep the board clearing here, going. Going strong. Come on, just draw a land or something useless. This doesn't look useless. He's investigating. He's investigating why his owlbear is sitting in the corner of the battlefield, not, not contributing anything. I'd be going crazy with that thing. 
I don't have that much life. Dang it. More value. If you notice the theme here, I keep having to sacrifice multiple things. I mean, what Mar yeah. Mog War Marshals, a three for one on our favor, but we're having to sacrifice almost all of them to just deal with uh, cannon fodder, the battlefield here. A spell would be nice. That's pretty cool. I don't know if it's worthy of uh, pushing anything through here. Of course, with our token, it might be. So we'll say no to the Owlbear again. Saying yes to this, drawing here as we watch our clock tick tock away, and we're supposed to be some aggro list, right? I'll throw this on here. And attack. Uh, sacrificing this. Yes. I like how it warns you anymore. It's like, really? You sure you want to do that? Kind of feels like bad magic. Draw dead. Pretty unlikely with a draw engine and investigate there. There we go. Starting to get the uh, hang of what we're doing here. It's like keep that owlbear back. It's funny how often that happens. Boy, don't want to see a... I wonder why these lists don't run a Aura Gnarlid. Investigate. That's, that's a cool little uh, artwork there. It's like, huh, I wonder what bit me. <laughs> Investigate. Uh-oh. All right. Looks like we're going to a game three. I don't know if we can... Oh, boy. There's just so much damage here. We only got him at 15, so... Need, like, a mountain heel cutter just to get through. There's part of it. Uh, I think it's better to keep that a mystery. It's much more likely this dies... I think this is irritating him more than others, though. So um, I guess we'll put this on. This will be our thrasher if we do go in with anything. I'll give it one more turn. We'll just pretend that maybe we're holding a bushwhacker. Maybe we will be next turn. Who knows? Gave him way too much time. Oh, boy. This isn't good. Sure. Albert, I've been picking on you all game. Why not keep it up? Nope. And the spider. Boy, this is this is just such quality versus our early start shenanigans here. There's no way we're going to pull this one off. Nickel's in the house. All right. We're playing old school goblins today. I'm just going to write the L already. We'll see what we draw next. But uh, this is just an embarrassment of riches on our opponent's part here. Give them way too much time. They got, they got too much board and we didn't get enough evasion or spells. Looks like we're going to a game three. Haven't seen any. Uh, is that lethal? Jeez, 10, 20, <laughs> 22. Exacto mundo. Alrighty. Uh, I guess probably best to just take the least amount of damage here. Old school goblins. Yep, I'm running two death sparks and one on the side too because I love that card. We haven't seen it much today though. We'll be going 1-1 one, one here. All right, we're dead. Off to game three. I already wrote it. All right, man. I really respect people that play Penumbra Spider. It's such a good card. I'm going to lose the life staff. Find it in that grenade. That's about all we got. Be nice if these guys showed up. I keep wanting to make a life-linked Sparksmith deck, either with black and Empiric Link or just, you know, life gain stuff. Keep them, uh, keep them safe to start gaining life and shooting everything out. Boros Goblins, anyone? This will really, really help if we can drop it. Just even for blocking, let alone the uh, Cannonade Anti-Tech. But um, we'll do our little superstitious moves here. Want that other death spark in here? I think I do. They have so many dudes. I'm actually going to lose one denizen and bring in a death spark. <clears throat> Logic being, there's just so much ground crew. 
Maybe there's no logic to it at all. All right. Good hand. Come on. All righty. I'll keep it. One more mana and we're good to go. Hopefully they don't have a super burly draw with uh, the elf. But in the meantime, we're going to get out early with this. If all else fails, we'll sit back and stare at the cool Deathspark artwork. Which two-thirds of it is bald. Fitting our quota yet again. Okay. Looks like we're going to get in for at least two. All right. Okay. Well, I'd really like to have the raider out before I do this, but um, we can just death spark on upkeep. Yield to this. Yield to this. Attack with this. Yeah. This is the kind of start you need. We'll probably bury the spark on upkeep, sack the mog, do some stuff with some things you know complicated math things Woo! click slowly and carry a very large stick death spark say no which puts a creature on top of that which does this which does that we draw we play we go like this and say have a nice day attack yeah Alrighty. Mm. We'll be bringing back Death Spark. Got an EOT Lightning Bolt. What is this new devilry? Hmm. Not quite sure if these lists run Moments Peace or not. We'll bolt here. Yes. Keep. Oh boy. Gotta go for it while we got it. Let's rock. Show me fog or show me death. Woo! All right. Cool. That's how you're supposed to do it. Not like that second game. I got a little too controlly, didn't I? <laughs> I think people, you know, they look at uh, Death Spark and they think like, one damage? Why would I waste a spot when I could just have three with, with this? And it's like, well, if you really look at it and like, you know, against certain matchups and fairies and such, you can, that thing ends up doing like 11, 12 damage in an average game. It's, it gets obscene. Always drawing a, used to run, um, who was that? Gar H, I think his name was. He used to play back in like, 2009, 2010-ish, really good Goblins player and always had Flame Jab, which is something, you know, the retrace one, but man, it's Death Spark so awesome. Definitely one of um, one of my very favorite red cards. It might be my very favorite. And you know what sucks is in real life, I've only got one, and guess what? It's white bordered. I haven't burnt it. Surprised how many people out there are, are truly just like mad at me for uh, burning cards. Like, like it's gold or something. I mean, there's how many probably millions of cards get, you know, in an attic and they get tossed out or flood damage or whatnot. I burn all of like eight or nine and people are like, oh, I'm, I'm mad at you. <laughs> Two lands. Oh, three lands. Somebody needs to learn how to count. We'll like it, though. We'll keep it. God, I love these mountains. I never tire of looking at these. These are just gorgeous. Apologies if you don't like these, because whenever I play red, I tend to use them. I'll keep. And boy, was I wrong. Last weekend, we went to uh, the Popper event, and my son and I were the only ones there. It was so sad. I hope the scene isn't dying. Hopefully this weekend, being a holiday here in the States on Monday, I still have to work, but hopefully uh, it's a big turnout. All right, that's enough lands for the rest of the game, please. I don't need any more. <laughs> Thank you, Nichols. All right. Uh-oh. We'll talk about math. We've got a deck that uses a whole lot of it. I play this every Sunday in real life. Come on, Bushwhacker. No more lands. All right, that's fine. Uh, let me get out the boys here. I'll do this. i got a really nasty War Marshal turn next turn. 
That way I can get full value for the War Marshal. Usually don't like to pay for him. I don't really, I love this old War Marshal artwork. It just feels, I don't know, more legit, like goblins are real or something. Like, oh, I'm talking from experience on all the battlefields I've been on, right? <laughs> Yeah, we split top two again. That's right. Yeah, Jeremy was saying, oh, I should, I should uh, fold it that way, right? Be like, hey, we got first and second again. We played one game and then left. That healer gets me nervous. I don't want that coming back. I've got substantial damage with our opponent's stultified board state, but like I said, I've, I've played against a, a guy named Jameson at the local club. He's a super good pilot of this, and uh, I tend to always get him, but it's it doesn't feel like victories. It's like you just got away with something sometimes it's just a quick little to do with a uh, stack gaining life and whatnot uh oh we don't really have too much too many ways of interacting with us other than to just smash and try to get them fast definitely be losing a you could argue death spark but blood celebrants a pretty key point to this list, but he's going to start gaining some life here with those Drannis healers, if anything. And amazingly flexible list when it starts going off, and you think like, "Oh, I'll just do this," and then it's like, "Whoa, they can they can gain life, they can they can zap you, they can do all kinds of things." So, yeah, it's funny. It it might feel fringe to you, Nichols, uh, the cycling list, but in our local meta game here, um, there's a guy like I said. His name's Jameson. He's a super good pilot of it. He plays it every weekend. Of course, you know I should admit he he doesn't he doesn't win. He's always very competitive, and like I said, it always feels razor close. But other than my own son, he's probably the one guy I don't want to go up against. Fantastic teacher of magic. I've seen him uh, take new players and just explain the rules to him and stuff. And I'm like, man, I think I told him I was like, you should be a teacher. <laughs> Got a really good way of explaining things and just making things seem nice and simple. Opponent has filled up their hand. We haven't really threatened the board too much. This might change some things. Drop here. A little drop here. I really wish this was a bushwhacker. That more marshal's going to get really big next turn. But we might not get a next turn. Never know how these things work. Attack with everybody. I kind of want to make them feel safe here. I don't know if I want to zap that token. I think it's better to do it next turn. Yeah, we'll wait. Power Slouch. Where do you live again where there's IRL? Oh, uh, yeah, it's, I, we have a few people from Huntington Beach. Um, Lawndale, there's a place called um, Collector Legion. It's, um, is it Lawndale? It's near Hawthorne. But um, just a few minutes away from where we're at and uh, pretty good scene usually last week was the first time nothing fired so th that's what got me a little worried but um we usually have enough for four rounds okay this is troubling fantastic store the only one i've ever seen that's better is the one uh, mox boarding house i was talking to the owner and he's actually designed it around that and Tried to make it kind of that same sort of vibe and feel and stuff. So, okay, let's see if we get lucky here. Oh, and since uh, we just had the uh, horse races here in the states, probably the most dramatic finish I've ever seen in a sporting event. The uh, the last horse, the last place horse was eighty to one, and it was in last place until the, almost the last turn and it came all the way up just like right out of a hollywood movie it was so amazing i just i was blown away all right let's uh let's give this guy some power we'll sacrifice this and something's got to go anyway which will trigger our foundry street go right here uh no and go like this. Come on, Bushwhacker, please. <laughs> I think we just have to go for the win here. Goblin math is hard. We'll go you. We'll say sacrifice this. We will. 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, we got this one. I see it's got a real big scary move here. Let's divide and conquer. We'll sack here. All right. Butterghost, would you say this is the most aggro deck in pop right now? Oof. I mean, you know, it's after Goblins is uh, this build of it's not that easy to play because of the death spark triggers, and there's there's uh, some decision trees that you know I think it gets clumped together with Stompy or Burn, kind of more straightforward, and de it definitely is. But um, I'd say RDW would probably be a lot more straightforward. But as far as the most aggro, no, I would think Tribe. Some tribe lists are just just on the sheer like this can win on this turn sort of you know um what am i trying to say uh it's that immediate uh the immediacy of it it's it's a good inevitability list that's for sure i know life gain can be a pain for this list to get through sometimes but i don't think it's worth dumbing down our list but Sparksmith seems so blah here, but it's still a creature. All right. The initiative is probably not going to be very relevant, but it is a one drop. Look at all these one drops. Just, whoo, it's just an ocean. <laughs> I, I think we're just boarded here. I know they've got that one blue spell that sometimes can be a thing, and I know a lot of them run... Um, I, I don't want to be sitting on a pyroblast hoping that they're playing the list that I'm used to seeing, which runs a, uh, a teachings engine, just one. And then there's some uh, life gain card that they're able to get back right off the sideboard. Sorry, I'd have notes if I knew we were going to run into this. Heel cutter seems pretty blah, but it's like, what am I losing here, right? Um, I'm going to bring in the shaman, lose a heel cutter, lower our curve, and I can eat some lotus petals. I mean, it's a reach, but it might happen. I think we're just going to rock like this, guys. Ah, oh, man. I need some more coffee. All righty. It's about time we draw bad. Mulligan. This is kind of a dead card. We'll keep. And because of that, we'll get rid of it. Done. <laughs> but yeah, if any of y'all are ever in the greater Los Angeles area and want to Meet me and my son. It's usually Sundays at the uh, Collector Legion. I said, fantastic store, even better people. I don't know what it is with and, uh, the popper players, especially as a father, you know. I mean, it's not like my son's a little kid anymore, but, you know, I'm looking at the quality of people, and they're, it's very high. I was like, man, all these people are like good friend material, like without question. It was just every one of them. And it's like every scene we go to, it's like if you play Magic and Popper or whatever, and it just seems like they're just auto nice people. No, that doesn't make any sense, and sample size isn't large enough at the moment, but so far it seems 100%. All hmm. I love seeing some goblin action. Yeah, it's Groton. That's, uh, we've seen you here for quite a while here and there, but um, yeah, it just it felt like an old school day, you know? I was like, eh, I'm going to dust this thing off. And... All right. I don't like this uh, natural mana our opponent has here, so we'll lead off with a sledder. I'd rather him be hurting for uh, for stuff here, but we'll keep this a bit of a surprise. I'm so mean to war marshals. I know a lot of players I would consider better than me tend to always pay for the upkeep and stuff. I'm always about pitching them. That's why I like to run the full eight sledder raider combination. Man, I love that artwork. <laughs> you come over a rise camping, you know, you just hear some big explosion in the distance. You come over a rise and you just see this thing staring at you. It's like nighty night. <laughs> that is just seething evil. It suggests that it's been submerged too, like it's been wading around in a swamp chest deep because of that little color pattern on the top of its chest. It's been thinking too much. All right, let's go. Thanks for making propaganda your viewing choice on this lovely Saturday. At least it is here, nice and cloudy. And I finally got my beat my wife 3 0 this morning in, um, what do we play? Rummy Cube. It's kind of our way of waking up in the morning. 
There's no real storm action here, so I'm just going to rock here. I know we, we can get Maroon next turn with this sequence. I just really want to smash. Attack. Going to be careful. Suffocating Fumes might be in, in a list like this. I don't think so. Do this and sacrifice here. Really wish we had our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man in the form of a Goblin Bushwhacker showing up next turn. Yep, that's why I love me some sledders. I don't want there to be a bunch of stuff in the yard. Not too worried with this color combination we're seeing right now. Might have them next turn. Always so nerve-wracking playing against these styles. Oh, if anybody out there knows uh, streaming software well, I don't want to say this because I don't want to you know, poke... Uh, malice at my own show but for about the last three weeks whenever i roll the stuff i don't know if it's a bit rate problem or what um every once in a while you might hear it on some replays like maybe the intro it'll be going pop again and then it, there's like a little digital hiccup just for, it misses for like two frames and then it's back to normal and uh i want to know what's causing that it seems like a, a render engine or like a, if i if i play the thing through then it plays fine sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't it's just it's really strange Creature, no. All right, we get marooned. This really blows. Well, that could be 2, 4, 6, 11 if I do it that way. Let's attack. I think I just want to make him feel safe. I think he's got another turn, right? You know, they've got um, the street wraiths. So I'm just going to play an honest game here and just sacrifice one of these guys. Yep. I could have got him to two there, but I'd rather value my board. There's no Dranus Stinger on the side, and I know they run Street Wraiths to go through, so I think we got to make them think that we're on a... Um, come on, go Goblin... I mean, um, <laughs> Mana Monkey, Gorilla Shaman, where are you when I need you, man? Come on. Not that it really would do anything at this point. That's a cool uh, avatar. I don't think I've seen that one before. It's from Emekro, the promised end. All right. They caught a win here indeed. And that's a good start. Tempted to just F6 here, but... No. No songs of the damned. Maybe they have weather the storm. That'd give them plenty of time. Goblins is just a very honest deck. You're not prepped for it. You know, if you're like me and you you really respect burn and goblins and such, you know, you start packing two or three uh lone missionaries at main. When you run into that kind of stuff, it's pretty hard to push through. It can happen. But I like this Goblin Grenade count at two. Like I said, I've happened more than that. Like I said, I started with four, went to three, and two felt much better. I just didn't like seeing it in my opener. Nichols, it's so good to have you back. Nichols used to be an old stalwart regular here on Propaganda and in the Popper scene, too. Took a break like many do. Came back, hopefully with uh, all new energy and revitalized. Fortunately, my work situation getting a little frustrating. Been uh, kind of getting hoodwinked into these uh, some obligations, and then it grows into this thing that I never agreed to, and so uh, my schedule might start to really suck here soon. But right now, I'm just kind of like. I'm that that's the blue card I was talking about. Yeah, that that one's uh that's brutal. And it got jump start too. Lots of life. No songs of the damn please. But anyway, so I I was I played the Boy Scout back when I started this gig and I I, I do this thing for there's what I was thinking was gonna happen. 
I volunteered, you know, to help out. And then it just grew into this thing where it's like, you never have holidays off. And it was like, so I kind of raised my hand at, and I was just like, Hey, you know, this kind of isn't fair. It's like, uh, every single holiday, I just have to work through it, you know? And so, uh, we'll see how that goes. Maybe I'll know more in a week or so. All right. I think we win here. Attack nice and slowly. Oh, okay. Not a card you expect to see. They could have got three goblins out of me minus that play. Well, things just got interesting. Darkness. That makes me nervous. They just play the Ash Barons. Hmm. <laughs> I love darkness. It's just such a... feels like it belongs in the time spiral, you know, where it's like, oh, we break the rules. We're going to get black. It makes sense. It's dark out. Can't tell where you're going. Hmm. <laughs> One card, what is it? Don't be a storm. Don't be. Come on, let us get lucky. Oh, was it? Do they always have to have it? Reaping. Crunch. No petals or white mana, so problem here is uh, he can flash back what's its what's its name, but he needs a mount uh, land to do that, I think. Oh, he's got to discard a card to bring this back with jumpstart, right? Yeah, that thing really keeps my my buddy in real life in the game. But again, I just don't think it's worthy of uh, bringing in a pyroblast there. Be funny as hell to pull the game off of that. Keeping this mountain in our hand is making them be very honest with uh, street wraiths and such. They might even think that we're on a fire blast. Obviously not with that play, but... Now how many darknesses do they have? I think they're just going for a life gain turn here, reset and get the... Uh, Dalhada's ploy? Huh? I'm not quite sure how you say that. Played Cooper the Red last night, says Nichols, and he was on Goblins too. Oh, interesting. Small world. Lots of Goblins. Goblins feel like they might actually evolve on Earth, like get some jackal-monkey hybrid repository scab. Yeah, this is exactly like the list. Yeah, and then he brings back the beast. There it is. Make them have it, baby. I'm just going to... I'm tired of clicking. If it costs me the game, it costs me the game. Ah. Oh, Goblins is incredible against Faye. You know, the Angler is just bumping a 1-1s one that sacrifice and hit all day long. So get me wrong, just like any deck, you know. The second you say that, you lose to it, but for the most part, it's usually how, the, how it rolls. I should go get coffee, take a break. <laughs> I 
see the artistry at work. I can almost guarantee you this is a list you'll never see me play live for a lot of reasons. It's confusing as hell. Hard to play live. Time crunch. There's all kinds of things. I've got it built, but mess around with it every once in a while when I'm feeling very cerebral. Yeah, I was pretty surprised with Neon Dynasty. Oh, I don't like seeing these petals. Dang it. That's white mana. That's life. But we're in a league now, sonny boy, so I'm going to make them beat us the old-fashioned way. Here we go. Yeah, to match our old school theme today, one of the very first commercials I ever did for uh, Propaganda was Flame Tongue Hot Sauce. And so we started the show with that. We've got the old school Wild Mongrel original, kind of a goblin theme today. Hydroblast Soda. We've got the old uh, Wild Mongrel dog band, thrash metal. 45 mana. Here we go. Is it teachings? Yep. Yeah, this looks exactly the same. I don't know. What do you think, chat? Game three, do we bring in pyroblasts? I don't think so. It's like waiting for our opponent to have it. it would sure cause a uh, well-placed rock under the foot. <laughs> Tripping. I was just watching Troy the other day on uh, some cheesy channel out here and... Uh, Remember when Achilles was fighting Hector, he trips over that pebble and he's like, get up. He's like, I'm not going to let a pebble take my glory. I always thought that was a, such an intimidating line. It's like, oh, crap. There's parts of that movie that are really good, and it's the rest of it's just garbage. I remember seeing the trailer for that and just being blown away by some of the effects, and now I look at it and I'm like, oh, boy, what was I thinking? 40 mana. Let's go. Yeah, we took out sp um, most of the Sparksmiths. <sighs> this is why we keep in Death Spark. Not that it can't just do it in response to uh, the trigger, but still an option. Sometimes they pass and gain a bunch of life, and then they have the blood still burn out. But yeah, I don't know, boy. That uh, the blue card seems pretty pivotal. I think I'm going to bring in two pyroblasts. Look at this life gain, bonk! Beautiful, thirty-five life. I'll pull the jerk card here and let him keep going. I mean, the game's lost, but. All right, Shiraz, you got my back on that plan of action. Definitely want to keep Arsonist. We could uh, activate it in response. Whoa. Well, this will go real fast. Will they draw themselves out? Tune in next week, folks. Sure is pretty when it works. Boom ba. Opponents in single digits. We literally have twice the math. All right. Well, this is absolutely unnecessary, as is this. Gosh, do we just go complete? We could play all four. Just make sure that we see them. 
got plenty of stuff to do with our other hands. I think I'm going to play all four. Hmm. Love the arsonist. Death spark would be good. EOT if we could keep things going. The initiative's not really needed, but let's keep super low to the ground. Mouse abuse, yeah. I call them arthritis lists. Some life staff. All right, let's bring in one. I think we'll get rid of the initiative. Let's try this out. All right. Yes. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, we'll keep. What do you guys say? I think we keep this. It's right on the edge. This is... All right. We'll lead off with the fatty, and hopefully we just get a land and some uh, goods. Darkness Man is already up. All right, we'll lead off with the raider. Keep our life train going here. Come on, mana. Letter. I was going to get our dudes out. We'll attack. And get this clock going here. This is top deck, a pyroblast. So we can keep them off life gain. Another shenanigans. I'm going to probably trick to bolting here. You know, you don't want them to feel too threatened. Might be a sneakier play to just attack with the sledders and act like we missed our creature drop. Give them an artificial sense of uh, time. I'm thinking way too much for a goblin's flare. Like that. That's enough lands. We can stop now. We'll go like this. Attack here. I'm going to death spark here. Yep. Six damage. Darkness, cycling, okay, okay, interesting, and that buys a lot of time. That was a better darkness. As darknesses go, that one was better. This deck makes me so nervous. It's like tribe if they just had multiple, like eight or nine tribes in their list. And inside outs or about face or whatever. Uh oh, tapping out. OK, 
Again, thanks to Chris at Carousel Games out of the UK for sponsoring today's outing, host of the show, and many others. Probably got about four or five more free leagues to go. Next week, I believe, I'm going to be playing this pretty cool um, uh, vehicle list that I ran into last night. It's very impressed. Some interesting interactions I did not know about. Mainly, uh, unexpected fangs sticks around on vehicles. That's pretty badass. Okay. Well, I better do it right now, because we got that death spark with the blood celebrant's name written all over it. Kill the celebrant. They missed their land drop. I'm going to leave the death spark for the celebrant. Darkness enters the zone. Okay. Darkness. Shoot. Raise the spark. Okay. Shoot. Attack. Make them use it. I'll turn on spark next turn. Can we hit? I'm sure they'll pop it. Oh, wow. Okay. Interesting. Suit up. Nice. Yeah, I hadn't seen that one. I'm sure I've seen it, but... All right. Let's see that blue spell show up now. I've already got a teachings in the yard. Opponent's definitely probably feeling the clock. Don't think they'll be expecting a pyroblast. And I love doing things that are unexpected. We've got three damage with the death spark right there. Actually four. It's going to come back this turn, and technically we can sacrifice everything to it. Love me some death spark. That's the one I wish they would reprint. Click slowly. Just hanging out behind us. I mean, uh, behind uh, darkness, I guess. I don't really need to play that, so I'll attack. He has to do it now. Yep. There's no reason to really do this on this turn in case he has storm. So we'll just leave it simplified. Death spark on his turn. Okay. EOT action, huh? Hmm. Yeah, I'll do it right now. Oh. Respect. All right. Two O. Let's see. Did I go? Was that a win win or a win loss win? All right, win-loss win. Okay, guys. 
Who's ready for a horse race? I am. This is easily the hardest thing I have ever edited. So I really hope you enjoy it. Please listen to all the little tiny words I use and the announcing and great stuff. Thanks to my buddy Jason Tibbetts for an amazing VO. And uh, be back right in a sec. Welcome to the 16th Annual Popper Derby. Infamous jockey, Cooper the Red, riding horse 11, dead with And they're all in line, ready for the start. Jace with the call. And they're off. Una's Grace feared out at the break, and the Philly momentary blink came out strongly leading the stampede. Weather the storm and skewer the critics are right behind, and shenanigans is fourth early on. Then lightning colt on the outside, dead weight outside of gut shot. Una's Grace is next. White Border Nightmare is racing nine lengths from the front. Then Gleeful Sabotage on the inside and Bump in the Night. So Richard Garfield's horses are 1-2 into that first turn. Number five, Weather the Storm is leading Skewer the Critics. By half a length, the opening quarter mile was slow, 24.48 seconds. Lightning Colt is third to the outside while going three wide on that turn. An epic confrontation on the rail is momentary blink, and number three shenanigans are between those two racing just three lengths off the lead, as Skewer the Critic sticks his neck in front of the backstretch, taking over from Weather the Storm now. Lightning Colt and shenanigans right there in contention, momentary blink fifth, and then Una's Grace on the outside. Gut shot and white bordered nightmare sent through on the inside, dead weight and bump in the night. 47.65 was a half mile and an early vote now. Momentary Blink comes through on the inside of Skewer the Critics and the two of them are now matching strides as they race for the far turn. The Phillies in front, Momentary Blink by a neck. Skewer the Critics on the outside second, Lightning Cold is third. Shenanigans is coming under pressure. He has to do better. After that in fifth position comes Gutshot. Three quarters up in 111.24 and they're into the stretch and it's Momentary Blink, the Philly and last year's winner Skewer the Critics. They are nose to nose as they arrive at the final furlong. Momentary Blink digs into the rail. Skewer the critics on the outside. These two putting on a show. Last year's winner in the Philly. Momentary Blink inside. Skewer the critics outside. Then nose to nose all the way to the wire and it's going to be a photo finish. The Philly Momentary Blink wins. Skewer the critics was with her on the wire and dead weight was dead last. The final time was 1 minute 53 and 1. The Luxacoff's Wild Mongrel Bubblegum. Blows colored bubbles. Changes colors while you chew. Discard your old brand for something new. Mm, the Luxacoff's Wild Mongrel Bubblegum. It's yummy. We're back. Tried to save you guys uh, staring at the screen for over a minute, but I can only roll to so many commercials. Hopefully you enjoyed the uh, horse race there. We will attempt to bring up the uh, deck list here. and I'll keep sp pay close attention to the uh, alerts. Hopefully it doesn't fool us. So yeah, really liking this list so far. Always tempted to run four of these and three of these. We'll see, though. Let's see how we're doing. Join. Let's see some fairies, please. Yeah, I want to play first. One mana. Oy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is a tough one. Oh. If we don't draw a land, we are stuck attacking for one. Bolting and I'm going to mulligan this. It's one of the few. All right, we'll keep this. I just had to get rid It's such a tempt. You know, if you draw a land there, that last hand's almost unbeatable, but we'll keep. Let's, uh. Oh, I really like this combination. We'll get rid of the initiative here. Done. Not sure what we're up against, so. Let's just play like they're not going to do anything. Maybe it's, uh. We'll have, we'll have some openings because this uh, Foundry Street's going to get big real fast. Lord Maximus, thank you. First time chatter. Thank you. And for chiming in, the little cowboy man. Woo! Forest, bad news, lots of blockers. Uh-oh, this might be our first loss of the day. Let's try to do something to get in the way. Listen to what I say. 
Sorry, what I'm saying. This all day. Always yield. Always yield. Maybe they're off of white and I'll just uh, block here. They block it. Suggests they've got yep, a few more uh, guys right behind it. Bad news for us. All right. Silhana. Ledge Walker, one of the other commercials, was one of our first ones. We did a window washer for the cities of Ravnica. Quite a stretch. What? What else are you going to do hanging out on the ledge, right? See, if this was an instant, uh, so much better. I don't want to pay for this. Okay. Nope. And wish that could trigger you-know-who, but it won't. So let's uh, bring this dude out. We'll bring out this mama and attack. Yeah! God, feels underwhelming. All this real estate and we're attacking for one. Gotta pay your dues, goblin man. We get a mountain. I think the play will probably be a... Uh-oh. <sighs> the number one reason goblins does not like to play hexproof is that card. I wish there was a white elemental blast in red or something. Dreamer's Tango, I like your style. I'll write that down. Thank you. That is very valuable. I, I hope that continues. People giving me sideboard suggestions before we sideboard so that I can, I don't have to ask and wait and sit around and do absolutely nothing. Ah, man, that Foundry Street block was a pretty good one. Let's do this. We'll sacrifice here. Let's get him back down to earth a little bit. Attack. No big enchantments, please. Two, four, five, twelve, yeah. Boy, just half of our attacks just negated it, and that's if they don't draw an enchantment. Code 1300. Yeah, but talk about uh, colors that are getting a lot of toys that I don't think they should be is black. What's up with all these this last year? Oh, there goes the game. The uh, enchantments and such that, you know, the enchantment removal they're getting. Okay. And then there's some games you just can't win. That'd be one of them. It needs to run Martyr of Ash. You can always attack with it, right? And bring in Pyroblast for a boggle. That's always fun. All right. Two electric rays in. Don't want to bring in Goblin Caves for obvious reasons. Flaring Pain not needed. Life Staff. Eh. The, the life swings are so ginormous in this that I think gaining three life at a pop isn't really going to be uh, worthy of seeing it. Hmm. Play Poros Recruit and Hopgoblin. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> nice nice uh, tech there, Dreamer Stango. I don't know if it's worth the downgrade, but I like I like your mode of thinking, my friend. Good times. Pyroblast for the win. How crucial was that Pyroblast last game, right? I go try to get that silver bullet, and you're like, dink. No. This is more aggro. All right, let's go. Yeah, you talk about a play no one would see coming. Red deck playing Patrician Scorn. And be like, Ugh. I think Patrician Scorn reads that you have to have a plane, doesn't it? Or is it just a white creature? No, you have to play another white spell. That's what it is. Yeah, I want to play first. All right. No Armadillo Cloak, please, because this is just... A brutally honest hand. We might even be able to race a cloak if it doesn't get out obnoxious here. Another white spell. Yep, yep, there's no planes requirement. That's pretty cool. I love all those rather than except on Tuesdays in a full moon. Very good cards. Let's go. All right. We can get them on the defensive quickly. We can use our uh, Mog Raider to prevent them from gaining life, meaning like I run into them with a bunch of damage and they block with Armadillo Cloak and I sacrifice that creature so that they don't gain the life. Same with the Seeker of the Way, stuff like that. Just in case we've got some new new players in the house. I'm not quite sure how some things work. We'll see. Or in this scenario, if this is an Ethereal Armor. Yep. 
this I will go crashing into because we have plenty of uh, resistance. Uh, mountain, please. Thank you. I like when my deck listens to me. Let's rock like this and then this. Yeah. Attack. We're not afraid. Sacrifice. Five, seven. Crunch, don't have it again. Just don't have a damn armadillo cloak. That is so hard to get past. This is probably Goblin's worst matchup. Remember when Goblins started fading out, it's because Hexproof started going up on the rise. Just so hard to race. Don't have it, don't it? God dang it. They just seem to always have it. For a deck that doesn't draw very many cards, just brutal. So we've got a plus three on our uh, ratio here. So we can attack for more, more than that, but still, it's just such a crushing play. Hopefully they stay back. Nope. <laughs> Thinking they wanted to play defense. Crunch. And let's switch life totals. Oh, this might make things really interesting. Thank you, Bushwhacker. I forgot that you are in my list. As I click through my turn, that'll be a nightmare. Oh! How you like me now? Woo! Put some respect on my goblin's name. <laughs> I think I want to lower my curve and lose a sparksmith and bring in a shaman. Not that it's even needed, but it's a 1-1. One, one. Hmm... Yeah, you're going to sacrifice a goblin, though. That was epic whacking, <laughs> Lord Maxis. Well said, my friend. All right, let's just hope that they don't have it again. Good grief. I think our curve's even lower. I've got a different build of this, too. It's uh, goblin tokens, and it runs uh, impact tremors. If we bring that up in the chat, I'd appreciate it. One of our... Uh, any propaganda knights in the chat? All right, three lands, bushwhacker draw. Let's just, we got to keep this and let's just hope that they don't have yet armadillo cloak again. Card feels amazing, impact tremors. It always eats a turn, so you always feel kind of like, ah, dang it. Pyroblast. Wah, wah. Bad dad jokes. All right, no more lands, and we're in pain town here. Come on, be mana screwed. Nope. Hmm. You attacking me, sir? <laughs> I will still attack. I have to lose my team to do it. Sure, I'll do it. That being short-sighted. Got three cards. I'll do it. Yeah, what do I want to lose, though? Yeah, I'll go going for the team here. Let's go. Right. Witty Roastmaster. Uh, goblins are starting to play like Comedy Central Roast or something, right? Oh, we got a brutal turn. Don't have it for that 900th time. There we go. Okay. It's pretty scary, but all right. Okay. Come on over. Not getting around that, are we? 
All right, land, that's enough. Seriously, let's go. Attack. I think we just go honestly here, right? That's six, ten coming through. Crunch. No land, no land. Flaring pain. Right now our Raiders are just MVPs in a lot of tough matchups. Stompy, Hexproof, etc. That's why I run all eight, meaning the Sledder and the uh, Raider. Whew. All right, it's probably going to be this next turn or two. Can we just get a bushwhacker and just make it nice and easy? Creature. Ugh, come on. Really? Attack. It's obviously going to block there. That alive. Today's deck, red mana. Good lord. Is that enough? I have to block sacrifice. I have to lose my whole team and block to stay alive here. Right, that'd be a four, four. We take seven. And we lose our whole team. I don't think there's a scenario I can win here, but we'll do it just for uh, to show options, I guess. I'll block. Make sure to do this in the right order, or <laughs> you get double egg on the face. Playing Reckless Impulse in the spot of a uh, Goblin um, Grenade for a while there. It goes really well in this list. Even thought of running a, a build with um, Synthesizer, right? You're going to just throw up a top deck, get a white creature. Hey, now now we're talking, right, Dreamer Stingo? So you run a Synthesizer build of Goblins, maybe. You're able to get a white creature, and then you can play, you know what? Um, what was that called? I don't know what. Patrician's Scorn. That'd be funny as hell. All right. So we're going to click real slowly, say this creature's got to get bigger. Make sure to do it in this order. I don't know why. But this is just sheer uh, to show somebody like, hey, we're not dead. Yes. All of our stuff's dead. Now we got, you know, Mountain Draw. Go to one life. Bleh. It's over, baby. And we have our first loss. It's expected. Good for them. 2-1. That's probably 80% of the time you're going to lose that matchup, especially when they draw that many uh, cloak, cloak, cloak. <laughs> Oh, you're right, Dreamer Sting. Oh, yeah, never mind. I was getting a little too uh, hopeful there as far as... Uh... All righty. Yeah, that was a scenario, too. A lot of times um, I will play Martyr of Ash in this kind of a style because you can just attack with it. And then if uh, you get whittled down and you want to hoard your land, you can actually get rid of quite a bit of a board state. I've got a few other, like, uh, so this is the Tokens build, not the one we're playing right now. Um, and it, it runs Martyr's Main and um, the Moor Marshal, the Impact Tremors, Great Card, Instigators, a lot of two-for-ones, multiple Death Sparks, just a completely different style. But this one's near and dear to my heart. Arsonist is pretty sweet when you run this many Sledders and such, but it'd be nice if we run up against some fairies. I really want to see some fairies show up. 
Bummer. It's feeling like we might go 4-1 or 5-0. Maybe we're still in the 4-1 train. We'll have to see. I hope they don't pair us against another Hexproof player, especially like a rematch. That would suck. But it's options like that that I think keep uh, um, goblins on the periphery. Sexproof is pretty damn uh, standard list right now, so uh, you're going to see it. But uh, we need to... Um, oh, what I was saying earlier in the show, I lost my train of thought. But uh, So goblins went away because um, RDW came around and was able to get past Electricery. But then, you know, Fiery Cannon 8 showed up, and that got rid of RDW. And so given those two evils, I actually think this might be the better of the two red decks ways to go um because the sledder and the uh, raider you're able to keep your guys alive a little bit more than you should be able to and you also get that uh, really sneaky scenario of being able to get around all kinds of uh, creatures and stuff i love two mana hands i love bushwhacker hands we'll keep and a foundry citizen doesn't get much better than this i mean if we had like a war marshal that might be cool instead of one of these but one of these will probably bite the dust so we'll see In my experience, whenever I take away mana, the deck gets better. Even if the card seems so much better in regards to, like, Roastmaster in the chat. All right. We've got a double Slatter Raider turn. Attack for three. And that's the worst case scenario. All right. Yes! <laughs> Time for evil! Who's ready for some fun? Remember what I said we were going to do? Well, we're not. We're going to go like this. Bloop. Death spark might be a scoop. Oh. All right. I'll attack into that. Sure. Uh, let's do this. Yeah. Attack. Let's go, fairy man. I'm going to turn on my death spark. Woo. Not expect a mutagenic. Even if uh, ninjas show up, they've got a lot of goblins to get through. Hey ya! Hmm. Somebody's sticking around for fairy math, right? Problem here. One, two, three. Top deck that would be fine. You know, if he counters a creature, that's fine too. So I'll just I'll let it sit cool so this is more important than this in this stage of the game so we'll bring this out maybe we'll see if we get fairy food if not, well, he's going to turn on death spark if anything counters that's fine cool here we go and uh yeah i'll attack keep these fairy count down here Hmm. Get that thing off the board. I want that coming back and forth with ninjas. A little suspect play there, but... Moon circuit, not a problem. Got lots of options around that. Right. Yep. Bring it back. Whoa. All right. This got interesting. Hmm. Do I just do this? And uh, I'll just attack here. We'll block with the Foundry Street or sacrifice it. Boulder's Gate's not going to be available online. Is that what I just read? Better make sure that checks out before we start spreading propaganda. <laughs> All day long. I'll keep the board off. Make you have to commit. Play a defensive goblins here. Keep that death spark coming. Oh, don't like that. Oh, don't like that. 
Uh, this is just scenarios where you can lose these games. Alrighty, let's say okay to that. We'll just say nope. Draw. Here we are. Heel cutter. Attack. You. All right. Sacrifice. Yep. He comes back. What an old school build. That I don't like. Okay. Just in case they've got a fairy. He's too hot, making my nose drip. I'll let this rock. Play this with the kicker. Two. I'm happy we got a, just a fairies list. Let's watch we lose. Be like, ah, told you it can't happen. Spire Golem goes a long way from making that happen. That's a strange play knowing I've got a heel cutter in hand, so that suggests that they just got hard counter magic here. So, uh, yeah, if that's the case, we'll just Death Spark in response. Probably eat a fairy. I can't think like that. They're not that far through their list here. Alrighty. This just got better. Now we have quite a few other options. Pa 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 pa. We have to do this. Yep. Attack. <coughs> Excuse me. Come on, Spire. You got no game sitting across the board doing nothing. I'm just going to get you. Go and get. Hey, <laughs> that's interesting. Do we just do this? Say no blocker. Nah, just go for the win here. Hey, bloop. Ah, uh, maybe a little bit of misplay there, depending on what they got here. All right. Okay, that's closer than I thought it was going to be. I'm so old school. I call that muck. Mono blue control. Whoosh. Embarrassment of Riches here. I think I'll lose a Smith. Lose one of these. Arsonists are good. All of these things are good. I'm going to probably lose Tricks. I'm going to lose our Grenades. Value, 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 value. Three of these. Electricries. It's just, these are mostly for like Elves and Hex. Believe it or not, I think with our Death Spark package, I think I'm going to rock like this. Do I want all four? 
Yeah. What to lose? What to lose? Gotta be careful. Don't want too many spells. I'll lose a lightning bolt. Let's go. Poor fairies player. I don't think you should ever hear me say that, but. Yeah, I've seen better, but two lands and a lot of critters. Good times. In fact, there was a, back in 2008, there was a uh, summer there where I had a list that was just called I Hate Goblins, and that's how the uh, Untouchables became a thing with the pro-red guys and stuff, because it was just everywhere. Everybody was playing them. Good times, good times. Come on, give me a Death Spark. Even before a uh, Power Blast, it'd be fun. Alrighty, we'll play, uh, let's play this dude. Got a hard counter. Yeah, I called it the Untouchables because it runs, um, yeah, I've played it here before. It, it runs, uh, what, two Guardians, my, my hunch was right there, and then eight Pro Red guys, and then, uh, uh Steel of the Godhead to make them unblockable with lifelink, and it's just... If anybody re relies on red, it can make you feel like a genius. If you show up and everybody's playing red removal, galvanic blast, and such, you just you just look like Einstein. All right. Oh, I just mog mog dudes just gonna finish that thing off. Let's see what we're gonna do here with that on the stack. We'll play this. Uh, I'd rather have a. Raider out first. This way we only take two damage. We still get our guy. And now we can kill you know who. What do I mean by that? I mean Spire Golem. Attack! Yay! Things are looking up. It's fine. Nice to have an answer for the golem. Even here, just block Zack. Well, I'm going to want this to survive, so I'll go like this, sacrificing this, shooting this. All right. Play this. Let's put out the ugly stick here. Goblin Slider. <clears throat> and just a, an extra punch. Be nice way to bushwhacker there. Just chop him down, I tell you. This is like uh, when we run up against Hexproof. It's kind of the same thing. It's like you can beat them, but odds are you're not gonna. We bit too much hate. Probably sitting on like some. Uh, I'm gonna leave this out first because I want the cohort to get past a pyroblast here, but. Gosh, do I just shoot him and go? No, I'd be reckless. No attack. Whoa. Uh, sure. Yeah, we're low enough on life. I don't really want that Sparksmith going to Supernova there. Fine. And I got no board. Get him either way with this play. The Raiders and Sledders, unless they put out six creatures right now, 
snaps a thing, you know. Got to be careful with that. Please tap out. I don't want to have to dogpile on the one and have it get pyroblasted or snapped. All righty. We're just going to have to play fair here. Boop. Got a sprite now. I almost hope they do. They counter here, and then we, we win either way. This way we get to attack. Hiya! Boop. Watch they have four snaps or something like that. That would be ridiculous. Two, four. We just win here, so why respond? Now we'll respond. We'll say you, and we'll sacrifice you to, well, that's still lethal, right? Yep. All right. So we're in the winner's circle at 3-1. And I feel like a soothsayer because I told you that what's, what usually happens, and it did. All right. Well, my bladder is good. I don't really need to roll through a commercial. We're already in the winner's circle, so let's see if we can go for one. And honestly, I think, like I said, if I played Hexproof with this list a hundred times, they'd probably win 70 to 80 of them. And it's all dependent on, uh, you know, it can feel like a pretty good matchup if they don't have uh, Armadillo Cloak. But when they have that, it's just the, the math just doesn't work. <laughs> Maths. Yeah. And plus, you know, a lot of times metagame of magic gets a little slow or a little too hesitant and waiting around and such so goblins is a nice way of keeping people honest yo i want to play first yeah three mana that's a bit much we might get marooned if we get too many mana here I, sometimes i don't like a bolt bolt hand oh my kidding that's a nice thing to have in your opening right nichols great to see you Good luck, my friend, and uh, hopefully we'll see you online sometime this weekend and get a game in or such. But have a good day at work, my friend. Be grateful for even bad blah jobs, you know, because they can they can break things up. Sometimes when you just have too much time or like uh, sometimes I've been on a vacation and it goes over two weeks, it starts feeling kind of, I don't know. I just finished a book, uh, Cloud Cuckoo Land, and the theme was that grass is greener on the other side. And uh, there's a lot of truth to that where, you know, a lot of you out there want me to get a job at Wizards and help them, you know, make them use my commercials and do all these other things. And it's like there'd be a part of me that would be a little hesitant because while I would probably say yes, because you would want to say no to that chance, I think it could start making magic feel like work. And that's also why I, I don't like this pause. This suggests that they know I'm streaming and they're I'm not saying they're doing that. It's just I don't know why someone would take an entire minute anyway. Sometimes it's good to have a, a job that you can just kind of put on the shelf and focus on. My oldest, I think I talked about this a couple weeks ago when he got into YouTube. He was on cloud nine. He started making some pretty good money for a teenager. And then um, it was like that machine was due every like three days. He had to do a video, had to do a video. And everybody expected a lot. And he was the first to say about a month in, he's like, man, this is like work. And he started like not having fun. And so it's another reason I've been on the stream so long is I, I, rare occasions but i usually only will do uh one stream a week it keeps it fresh doesn't make you guys get tired of me hopefully and um i don't get burned out wow did our opponent just accidentally click on it and go wash the car what's going on all we want to see is a lot of creatures with a hand like this Maybe six cards from now, a death spark. We'll see. Goblins. Okay, two minutes. Keep. Now, maybe we can make him pay for it. Let's go. Boy, I felt like a hippie today. I had such long hair this morning. I had to cut it all off again. By long, I mean like, I don't know, eight, nine millimeters. Oh, very well said, Dreamer Stingo. Yeah, Mark Twain. Good times. Uh-oh. We up against Burn? What's going on here? 
Alrighty. Brown can be a really fun matchup because uh depends if they're of the persuasion where they can um Okay, respect that. Boy, if we don't draw a creature here, this is gonna feel pretty naked. They've got good looking lightning bolts too. Oh, it's a garrison play, eh? Alright. Well, let's see. We got a Boros matchup. This could be a fight. I think we'll keep this for creatures. Tempted for tempo to just zap, but we've got three mana. I'd rather keep those for sky fishers and responding to things. We really don't want to see a prismatic here. So Circle of Protection is like a really good card against like burn strategies, but not against goblins. This stuff just goes so wide that you need like 15 mana every turn to, to keep things off of you. Uh-oh. This looks like a three-rounder here, guys. He's already got strands in the yard, so we're going to keep these uh, bolts back so that we can zap stuff at EOT. Creature. Ah, oh, God, come on. This is like worst-case scenario. Early removal on our good critter. Marooned. Flooded at 17 lands. Yeah, I think this is my... Uh, yeah, the the uh, White Wedding. A lot of builds of this. Yep. Use up that prismatic early. Yeah, yeah. Damn that. Come on, creatures. Something. Oh, God. <laughs> Just when you thought you liked this deck. Look at this draw. Good Lord. Our opponent doesn't need help. Magic universe. There's some help. There we go. Nah, I'm just doing this out of frustration at this point. Get out of here. Turn off these engines. Reveal something awesome like a skyfisher that you have to. Yeah, you got to bury it again. Ha ha. Aha! Would have been brutal if it flipped over a plane. So if you're new to magic, you would probably think that goblins just <sighs> don't attack. I I would be a slight bit better with these draws if I had 18 basics, which sometimes I do argue for and run. We're running 17. <sighs> We've seen over a third of our lands and 11 cards. Do we just quit? This is pathetic. Strange plays and stranger draws. At least the game didn't start this way. That would have been really depressing. Play the mountain, make the two guys. I'm about to scoop. If I get another mountain, I will scoop. I know what I'm up against. That helps, but we don't really have a way around it. But we've got plenty of mana to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, the one time we draw it, right, and then the Skyfisher is the one creature we can't get through. Ugh. i almost rather we just draw a mountain there and just go to game two. It's like... It's like Here's something that'll really frustrate him. I think we played this to a 4-1 on the last two streams ago. Beautiful list. I really like
like that quote, Dreamer Stango. I don't think I've ever heard that before by Mark Twain. Very wise words. All right, this is a pretty obvious uh, pay for it. I've got mana for days. One of the few times you'll see me do that. We like this. There is nothing to fear in the yard. Let's tack. <laughs> Interesting. Sure. That synthesizer, samurai tokens with prismatic backup. That's such a safe feeling. Did they have to make them white, you know? When I was playing it, I'm like, yes, synergy for days. All right, that's the last hawk. Now they've got prismatic up. I can't get over these land draws. Got to make them think they're lightning bolts and we're waiting for tribe to show up. Who knows? I want to run right into a prismatic though, but at this stage, you know, they've got probably two in their hand. Here comes the life. I mean, we've only done two damage here. This is a really pathetic showing for our list here. Maybe we'll see some fireworks here, right? Let him kill us with tribe. Not that we can block if he uses the, uh, whoever heard of a wedding invitation with goblins, right? Hey, this is cool. Let's attack. One prismatic and we're just toast. We'll say you. We'll say kill that. That way I... Here comes prismatic. Yep. All right. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Told you 27 mountains is too much. It <laughs> feels like it. Yeah, the only deck that beat me when I played this in real life was my son because he had snuff out such a brutal sequence. Digging for inside out if they don't already have it. They're halfway through their list. That's so impressive for a Boros list to be able to. If you like this list, rewind, uh, go back in our videos like three weeks. Like I said, I think we went 4 1 with it. Hey, oh, alrighty, let's do this, I guess. This is just a lost game here. Yep. I'd rather keep this alive, especially against this board. What am I doing? We just lose here. This is this is so pathetic. Don't we? This creature sacrifice this. Oh, thank you, Nimchimsky. There we go. For those of you here live on Twitch. Well, that's a sign, isn't it? Good grief. How many more lands were we going to draw? I guess it's just going to hide the truth from me here. All right. My lord. That was depressing. Gorilla Shaman, make yourself known. Flaring pain, say hello. Don't think goblin caves. I'm not going to rock too much of that tech. Death Spark at two is all right.
notice a trend here. I tend to not really like the uh, Goblin Grenade all that much. Really, really liking these guys. Lightning Bolt's going to be MVP. Death Spark. Yeah. I think we might be able to go to one of these. It's going to be such a grindy matchup. I don't know if I want to really see it outside of surprise value or combat math. Heal Cutter going to go a long way. Flaring Pain going to go a long way. I think this is good. Hey, so I could technically bring this in to stay alive a little bit. Stuff's going to be dying. I, th I think I do want two of these somewhere in here just because of uh, our Sparksmith activation. You know what? I'm going to lose the Death Spark plan. I rarely do that. I just, in this matchup, outside of taking down some Squadron Hawks, which they're usually used for uh, tribe food, they usually don't really have sweepers because of their own creatures. Um, and we've got We've got our pump dudes there. I'd rather just play smart than uh, slow my roll like that. Denizens. Let me get rid of that last grenade. Let's go like this. Yes. Three lands. Is it going to be too much? We'll see. Keep. Come on, just have a slow all land hand like we had last game, right? Sucker. Whoosh. This might be able to get in for three. We'll see. Have to leave now. Says Jim Going to a movie in our cinema. Horror galore. Awesome. Have a great time, man. That sounds great. As always, thanks for joining me. Shirazamon and Nimchimsky. Almost without fail in Shirazamon. Definitely without fail. Crazy. If I was in your shoes, I'd miss probably every fifth show at least. But thank you for always being my backup plan and my moderators supreme. That's another thing, right? If I if I stream more than once a week, probably wouldn't <laughs> probably be going through mods like crazy. Uh oh. They're showing signs of it. Are we headed for three two? Not a four one? We shall see. Boop. Okay, that's enough lands for the rest of the game. Let's keep it honest, people. We'll do this for the extra bonus. Watch, he's got a... Attack! Yeah! Okay. Let's make them use two cards up. All right. Well, since our guy's going to die anyway, we might as well hit harder here. We'll go like this and say sacrifice this. I think so. You just can't kill a tribe with a uh, focused opponent and enough cards in their hand with, with damage. The old Edict's nice, but... Oh boy, it's getting really close to the combo here. One more cod needed, and then we're dead meat, folks. Wedding invitation return. Just going to keep smashing forward, trying to make him use his resource as long as there's no prismatic in the yard. I don't have much time. Attack. Smack. And we know that's not going to die. So I'm going to let... We'll go like this and at least take out a hawk. Yeah, Goblin Cave is really good against like a shrivel style effects or suffocating fumes. If we saw Black Deck or whatnot. But for right now, what are they going to reveal? Ooh, that's bad news for us. Yeah, this is a really tough matchup. Not as bad as Hexproof, but really close. It'd be cool if they came out with like a 
I don't know, maybe a card that says goblins learn to read and they, they it's a map to the battlefield and you sacrifice it and uh, goblin creatures can't be blocked till the end of turn or something. That would be pretty epic to get some true evasion. I mean, I've got enough in Mog Raider, but it requires quite a bit of sacrifice, but it's so on flavor, right? I'm just not going to respect much of anything until really want to keep them on their heels here. This one, I'll sacrifice this one. Yep. Get these out of the woods. Hit for it a little bit more. I feel like we're so sneaky with Tribe and Prismatic because they can just be so tapped out. I know I covered that three weeks ago when we played this list, but beautiful stuff. Faithless looting. Stack is awfully low there. Let me bring it up here. Yeah, if we're not playing Popper Commander on the kitchen table, then we're playing just Popper and my son's Demir list versus my uh, Azorius Tempo list, which I just can't get enough of. That's a fun, fun, fun list. I could probably play that every two weeks on the show. <laughs> I love having access to all gut shots and all mutagenics. Game one. It's like, take that. You've got a wedding invitation. I don't know what they're waiting for. Well, that's this is getting away from us quick. The only benefit right now is we haven't seen um, Prismatic at the yard. Yep. It's got red floating. Can zap one of our best dudes. Yeah, all right. I'd really respect that more if he went after the Raider. I think that's the better play. When you have a superior board state like this, it's just about anything's good. Alrighty, well, that blows, but at least we've got rid of a uh, Skyfisher. Maybe we can get a Bushwhacker. Again, you know, look at how naked, you know, you feel like, oh, we got him if we just get a Bushwhacker. So, nope. And just discard a uh, Prismatic in response to you going all in and then splat. And the best cards ever made in Popper Prismatic. As far as power level goes, it's got to be in the top three. As far as just ending and just having an effect on games, it's, it's gross. All right, does he have it? I almost hope he has it. Nope, still nothing. Wow. Okay. We're not putting enough pressure on him to not have it. I'm sure we're going to be seeing it pretty soon here. That'll help a little bit. I wish that thing stacked up. I know I said that before. Play one red spell, pay two mana, make everything unblockable, but it doesn't work that way. If it did, it'd probably have a little silver symbol on it instead of a uh, black. But... So this is... Yep, here we go. Culminates the end of our old school show, playing old school goblins. A few new cards, like uh, Goblin Grenade and such, but for the most part, I could probably... Feel like a list from uh, 2000 and whatnot. All yeah, right, at this stage, see, I, this is just completely useless. I mean, it gets one card, but unless he's got another one. Sure. Um, yeah, you. Nope. So, pretty sure it's uh, one of these got to go. So, I'm going to save this dude, sacrifice this guy. Yep. Outside of a double electricity, this just doesn't really do too much. And I'm kind of glad that happened. I mean, this is a losing game right here, but very rare scenario where electricity, unless you're playing totally recklessly, gets gets you. It's just, just too many tricks. Oh, that's cool. Let's do this. We'll say no to Skyfisher. Yep. Be able to kill Skyfisher if he doesn't want to dance later. At least this way we're able to uh, <laughs> make him use one card, right? So this is going to just zap it. Yeah, Sparksmith's pretty good. Sure. 
No, getting a little tired of this guy always asking me questions. Too many questions for a goblin. It's out of flavor. New Stranger Things is on. It's pretty cool. I thought I had that program today. Did I not do that? <laughs> Next week, then. Always a fan of 80s and horror and putting them together. Pretty good. So far, it's already better than Season 3. I thought Season 3 felt a little rushed with Stranger Things, but this new one feels pretty cool. There's a lot of new, new faces and good times. All right. Let's do this. Man, that'd be so cool to have like a phantasmal bear effect with this dude out there. Be like, wow, he's just mowing people down. That's game. There's prismatic. Hey. All red damage is colorless until the end of turn. Draw a card. That'd be a pretty sweet card. How much should that cost? Called like the, f the flame filter or something cool like that, right? Might as well make them use it. Say no to you. Yep. Now electric is a good card. It's going to take it. All right. He's probably got it halfway through the list. Prismatic backup plan. No. I think I could have made this show a little better. We'll go up against Heroic and then we save our own dude with Imitator Initiate. That'd be, I, I would love to do that play. Does this guy just have the threat of it and doesn't have it? That'd be interesting. It sounds, feels like something Kung Fu Trees would have done it back in the day. Like I'm going to take the combo out and just make him be afraid of Tireless Tribe. Wedding invitation, just leave that in, draw some cards, make everybody run for the hills. Nope. Squadron Hawk, double prismatic. I don't know why I'm still going. Oh, David Attenborough voiced a new dinosaur documentary. That's random. See, so bringing that up with the annoyed Altasaur game that we had, or the uh, Cycle Storm with the Dino. Alrighty, that ain't so bad. This is probably our Thrasher, so we'll just keep it on there, especially if they got a. I'm just suffering at this point, guys. There's two prismatic strands in the yard. We're just waiting for our opponent to beat us. <laughs> this is getting ugly. Bye-bye, initiate. That's what I would do. Well, the old school goblin's going to end up going, what, 3-2? Three, three, Even money, a little bit of profit. Again, thanks to Chris at Carousel Games for funding our outing and many others. I was right. Nope. It's this little dude's quote. Don't stand in his way, for his way is full of pointy things and fire. <laughs> just looks like he's just covered in mud. All right. We'll stop the suffering here, guys. I wish they would have comboed off there, but what are you going to do? So that feels pretty hard to beat uh hexproof and that but you don't really see that variant around i think that a typical boros you know bully list anything that really relies on strands and they have the respect to play four of i i don't think you're going to get past but some of the uh like boros monarch style things i think you could probably uh pull off but um so you know this is that time of the show i think it is anyway hold on make sure my audio is working see what did we learn A whole lot of nothing. I really like this list as is. I don't think I really want to change much. Um, this initiative was MVP. I might want to go with two and lose an arsonist. Um, it just really, really felt good when it came out. So we played goblins. <laughs> a whole lot of nothing. No, it's grown. We played. We got a three-two. A little bit of profit there. Um, yeah, the Goblin Caves, I think, is a necessary evil. I won't go more than one anymore, but um, going up against, like, Suffocating Fumes and 
you know, just long grindy games, mono black control can really be a house because all of your dudes are just like one threes. And so back in the day when uh, disfigure was the main one drop removal of choice, it, it really causes some headaches and, and uh, a lot of issues. But um, yeah, I, I really, really dig in this list. Um, I think honestly, I went to another league right away. I might just keep it just as is. If anything, I might lose one arsonist and bring in one more of these guys because they seemed pretty good. That being said, this is so good against just a lot of a, a lot of stuff out there, and you're able to sneak in that damage. And you saw what this does against any sort of fairy variant. And that was the best-case scenario fairy variant. We need to re remind ourselves of that. Had mutagenic growth and spire golem, which have, has a huge backside, and we were still able to 2-0 it. So, um just turn on guys sideways until we won. <laughs> All right. I would argue that uh, Death Spark and uh, some of the initiative plays and stuff like that make a better decision tree than a standard red deck wins list, but I hear you. So anyway, that's the Goblins as it sits in 2022 as far as my list goes. Uh, please like, subscribe, do all that good stuff on uh, YouTube. If you don't mind helping me out, I'd appreciate it. Every little bit helps. And we'll be back next week. Probably won't play a league next week. I'm getting a little leagued out. Um, I'd have the show have a little bit more pace and I'm kind of feeling a little roguey with this new build and uh, don't we'll see. We'll just see. Anyway, guys, I'm going to roll to a little uh, thing on removal. We'll see you same time, same place next week here on Propaganda. Thanks, everybody. Adios. Welcome to Sideboards Explored. Removal. Curse of Chains can be used as removal in any white and or blue decks. Great for isolating threats like Dermag Angler. Many times it is better to cause an opponent's creature to stay on the battlefield rather than go into their graveyard. Gutshot. Hopper is full of amazing creatures with a one toughness backside. And even if you're not on red, paying two life to counter a spell stutter sprite or do that unexpected prowess damage is nothing shy of awesome. Veridin Longbow is magnificent for the same reasons Gutshot is, only with the Longbow, you get to keep doing it. Gleeful Sabotage is a flexible card versus artifacts and enchantments, allowing a two-for-one removal effect for a small amount of tempo loss. It's a great starting point for dealing with artifacts and enchantments. Shenanigans is hate at its finest. This card just keeps coming back for more destructive fun and all at that low cost of dredging for one. Snuff Out exemplifies sneaky removal and shines versus Kiln Fiend style matchups. It is wonderful for stopping recursion loop combos, even when tapped out. Oblivion Ring is a great option when you're first creating your sideboard. Since similar decks tend to run Journey to Nowhere main, Oblivion Ring can act as a great backup plan that can target many other threats as well. Available at all fine Singer Superstores.